What's up everyone? Today we're going to look at how to use Figma for presentations. We're going to start with a really basic one which you have a link to in the description below and then we're going to zhuzh it up using prototyping. Let's jump in. So in the file you'll find a basic deck. This is a design deck that's inspired by the deck that um, Femke Design hands out in her YouTube channel. Go check her out if you haven't done that yet. But what I did is I kind of expanded on it a little bit. I put kind of my own branding on it and then I made it adjustable and I'm going to walk you through that now. So if we just look through the slides now, you've got some slides about the summary of the project, um, the team, relevant documents, project milestones. It kind of just gives a nice overview of what you've done so far in your design project. Goes through user testing, personas, business impact, principles, what's in scope, not in scope, research insights, and a little style guide at the end. So what I've done to this deck is I've connected all of the colors to like a basic color palette, which means that if you want to change it because your primary color isn't this kind of purple, but it's more of a green, you could just do that. And this will change it across the whole deck uh, wherever it's used, which means it's really easily adjustable for your own branding. Um, and also I've connected it to different display textiles and body textiles, which means you can go in and adjust those as you need. Now, this deck is great as it is. Obviously, a lot of it is dummy data, so you would need to go in and replace it. But then if you want to just do a really simple presentation, let me show you two ways that you can present this. So way number one is presenting on the canvas. And in order to do that, first thing, I'll use command and full stop to make my UI disappear. Then I'll select my first frame and use shift and two to just zoom into it. Once I've done that, I can use N to move to the next slide. You can see it's filling up the whole space. I don't have to be selecting it either. When I click on the end, it will just move me forwards. And if I use shift end, it will move me to the previous slide. So I can just do that. Now, the second option is to present this as a prototype. Now, you don't have to actually connect the slides in order to do that. If I select my first frame over here and then click on play, what will happen is it will open it in the prototype mode. And then you'll notice if I just click on it, so I'm clicking with my mouse, nothing is happening. But if I move it around a bit, you'll see that here on the bottom, it says one out of 28 because it's recognizing that I have 28 frames. And if I use my arrow keys, it will move to the next slide. OK, just like the N and the shift N. So this will work. What you will notice is that there's no fancy animation happening between them. It just swaps between them. So those are the two basic ways to present a presentation in Figma. Put some slides, shift two to zoom in, N, 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 or just go into prototype and click on your arrow keys. But I feel like we can do a lot better than that. So let's have a look together at how we can make this deck actually super exciting. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to connect every single one of these pages to the next page using Smart Animate. This is the boring bit, but once you've done it, it's kind of easier from there. So shift and E, and then we're going to connect them. So I'll select my first frame and just draw a noodle to the second frame. I'll set up my animation on this. And then once you've set it once, the next noodles you draw kind of automatically get that setting. So I'm going to want to use Smart Animate. I'm going to want to use Ease Out for now. I may then later go in and adjust some of them to use a different kind of bezier on the animation, but Ease Out is fine for now. So go ahead and connect all of your slides. Great. Now that we're all noodled up, let's just play this. I'm going to use that little prototype pop up that comes up I just use shift and space. And then it will come up and if I use my mouse keys, you see that already it's a bit more exciting, right? Already we've got like a nice movement between the frames. We see like, for example, that illustration, that illustration, they kind of like moved nicely to each other. So it's already a bit more exciting, but of course we're going to make it even more exciting. So one of the reasons that we even use Figma for presentation rather than anything else, especially for showing our designs is because when we make our designs, we make them in Figma. So let's utilize everything that Figma has to offer. And I think the best thing and the most impactful thing is scrolling. For example, I'm going to shift E to come back to design. In this project summary, we have a space for a design. Now we could just put in a screenshot of our design, but why? This could be a scrollable page. So I've just grabbed this design. You've probably seen this before if you follow my channel. I've used this kind of design in a few different videos. If I unclip, you see that this is actually a really long page, just an e-commerce page. But let's say this is one of the pages in the app that I'm presenting. So what I can do is I can place it behind this lovely frame over here. So I'll place it wherever it needs to be and then click on the left bracket, the square bracket, and it moves it back in the layer panel. You can see that it kind of fits nicely. What I like to do in this situation is I'll give the background of the page just a different color for a second, just so I can see, because you see now I can really notice that it's kind of sticking out here. 
Um, so let's see, what can I do about that? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Might move it down a tiny bit. I might just make it a bit round. Yeah, that's perfect. So now that's disappeared, I can see that it's not completely fitting at the bottom. So I'll move it a bit. Is it okay at the top? Now it's not fitting at the top. Okay, so I'll just take my image and I'll just bring it down a tiny bit. There we go. Yeah, that's perfect. Okay, so because this frame already had some overflow behavior to it, if I go into prototype, you can see it's got like vertical flowing, the um, navigation button and the tab bar on, on fixed, so they're not gonna move. So even just doing that, let me just bring it to the normal background color. So if I use shift and space just to view this, you see right now what happened is this used to be just a boring slide, but now I can also move inside of it. So that already makes it a lot more exciting than just an image. It kind of makes it feel like something super special, something you wouldn't expect. So if you are sending this to a client to view this and you're not only presenting it, so you can put a little indicator, like say through this page, and then you can like bring in a little arrow or something just to give a little bit of an indication that you can actually do something with this. And then when you send this to whoever you are sending this to, when they look at this page, they see, oh, it's a scroll through this page. Oh, that's so cool, it actually scrolls. Yeah, because people won't be expecting things to be kind of interactive when they're viewing a presentation. Let's add a bit more scrolling, because I think even that is just so effective. Let's have a look over here. So over here we have some project milestones. Now these milestones right now only show three months and we might have a really, really long project and we might have many milestones along the way. So let's start by just making this timeline a lot longer. So I'm just gonna pull it and make it, let's say this much longer. What I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna cop copy everything apart from the timeline. So I've just selected everything and then I'm using option and shift to just drag it, just create another one. Yeah, maybe even another one. Right, so this is just an example. We're just making this for us to be able to use it later. So I'll pull that out, great. Now you can see that when I drag them out, they've kind of left the frame, um, but we're gonna fix that now. So I'm gonna hold down command while I drag. So you see selecting all of them. Then I'll right click and frame the selection. So this frame right now is not inside of the big frame that it's supposed to be in. Um, so you can see that because you can see the frame name. I'm actually gonna name it timeline. So what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna bring it back into project milestone. I'll just drag that in. Great. Now, what we need to do is we go into prototype while selecting this frame and in overflow behavior, say horizontal. Now we're gonna get a little warning. And the warning is basically telling us in order for me to be able to control overflow, there needs to be some overflow, right? So right now this frame is as big as everything inside of it, so there's nowhere to scroll. So I just need to make the frame smaller, make it the size of the frame that it's kind of sitting in, in the slide. You'll see that that will disappear. And now when I play this, shift and space, you can see that I can scroll through this and this is really impressive. Again, when you send this to someone and you can actually just show them the whole project's timeline, walk through it slowly, go back, go forward, it's really impressive and you have enough space to put in all of your milestones moving forward however long you need it to be. You see, it's really small things that you can do that actually make a big difference and make your presentation A, more adjustable to your needs and B, super impressive. Let's have a look at some more cool things you can do using Smart Animate. Let's have a look, for example, at this page. Let's say you want to focus on each goal separately. So you want to start talking about this goal, then this goal, then this goal. Really simple way of doing that. I'm going to move design principles to the bottom, uh, shift E to leave kind of prototype mode. And then I'm just going to duplicate this page twice. So I'm using shift and option to do that. Now I have this little background marker that kind of tells me which goal I'm focusing on. So I'll move this one to the first goal. Then I'll move this one to the second goal. So it's really important that we duplicated that slide rather than try and remake it because when you use Smart Animate, kind of the Smart Animate needs to recognize that it's the same object in those three slides. So if I go and Shift E right now into prototype mode, you see when I'm hovering over this square, you see it recognizes that square and it makes it like a blue line around it in the two frames next to it and in the frame below it because it recognizes that that's the same element. All I did was duplicate and move the rectangle. I'm just gonna reconnect the noodles because they're all going to the wrong place. So this one moves to this one, then this one, instead of moving here, goes to here, and then this one goes to this one because this will be next to it. Now, if we play it, let's have a look. We're on this line, moving to this one, 
moving to this one. Now, this is already so good, right? It already gives like that feeling of kind of something unique, but we can use the animations to make it even more unique. So this is how it looks on Ease Out. Let's see what Ease In and Out does. Okay, looks a bit the same. Bouncy is the one that really does some like crazy stuff. So if I use Bouncy, you see it kind of does the thing. Um, gentle does a similar thing, but just a bit gentler. So you see, it's got a bit of that, hey. So stuff like that can, again, just add an extra level of coolness and an extra level of excitement to your prototype. One more cool thing you can do with Smart Animate is you can add some elements into your design that kind of just move around. These elements have no real impact on what's happening. They have no meaning, but they just add a bit of excitement. So I'm going to come to this slide right here and I'll add a line. So I'm clicking on L. I'll just add a line here at the bottom. I'm going to make it the same color as the background primary. Maybe let's make it five and give it round edges. Great. Now I'm going to copy this line, command C, click on this frame and command V. Now it's going to paste it here at the bottom in exactly the same place. But what I want to do is just move it to the left. I'm holding down shift while I'm doing this. I'll copy it, paste it here as well, and move it to the right. Yeah, maybe a bit more. Yeah, great. So what's going to happen when I select this frame, shift E, if I just hover over this line, you can see that Figma recognizes it in the other places. And because of Smart Animate, what's going to happen is when I move to the next one, you see I kind of just get that like motion between the line kind of appearing and then appearing again. So it just adds a bit of excitement to the page. And you can do a similar thing with circles, for example. So click on O, drop in a circle over here. I'm gonna make it quite big, drag it up here. I'll use just my light color and I'll give it a lot of like a layer blur. So maybe uh, and then I'll just deconnect the line and give it maybe 30% opacity. That might be a bit too much. 50. Yeah, that's great. So you can see you could barely see it. But then if I copy it, then I'll paste it into my team, Command V. I'll just move it around, making sure though that it stays inside of the frame. So you see it hasn't left my frame. Bring it all the way back using the left bracket. So what's going to happen now? Let's have a look at this. I'll just play this on the kind of big screen. So you can barely see it. It's in the bottom right corner. But when I move, you see how the page had a bit of like thing happening? Let's give it a bit more color so we can see it a bit better. So I'll select both of them. Yeah, so let's say this is how it's going to look. If I select it, go back, and then I move next. Yeah, so it just gives a bit of that kind of something's happening, this isn't just a boring day. One more really important thing to remember with Smart Animate is that sometimes it doesn't necessarily work how you want it to work and the way around that is using naming. So for example, if I play my color slide right now, shift and space, you see that I've got all these boxes and when I move to the next slide, it's kind of doing a weird thing, right? So this bottom one is going to the right. See, I think one of these is going up here and then these ones are kind of expanding, but it's not really great. Also, this is a chance for me to notice that this breadcrumb and this breadcrumb are not in the same place. And you've got movement there. And it's the same thing, so we don't want that movement. So let's start fixing this. First of all, I'm gonna delete this breadcrumb, take this breadcrumb, copy, select the frame, paste. So now they're in exactly the same place. I think, yeah, don't these aren't in the same place either. So copy, select the frame, paste, change to other. And then when I play it, let's have a look. Yeah, so we can see that that breadcrumb didn't move and the title didn't really move as well. First thing, great. Now let's sort out these squares. And the way to do that is using the naming. So right now, if I shift an E and I just hover over, you see this one is recognized as that one, fine. That one's recognized, that one's recognized. That one, it thinks it's the bottom one. This one, can't find it, can't find it. This one is that one. And then this one is that one. Okay, so we just need to sort it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to name them the same. So I'll select, let's say the top left of each and I'll name it one. So just command R to batch rename one. Then this one and this one, I'm gonna rename them two. Now let's see, I'm kind of happy with this one being three. So those can be the same one, which means that between slide one and two, the bottom left one will just expand. So if I command R and call it three, this one, I don't want it to exist in the second slide. 
Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to name it zero. Now let's see with this one. I think this one and this one can be four. So command R, four. This one and this one should be five. This one and this one should be six. And then this one, again, I don't want it to exist in the second one, so I can just rename it zero as well. Let's see if that helps. So shift and space to open it up. Ah, oh, look at that. Much nicer, right? So you see that the top three here just kind of expand down because they've got more space. The top two ones just kind of move aside a little bit. And that bottom one, the number three, expands as we wanted it to. So basically there's no way to escape the small animate. If you set it to the whole side, it's just gonna happen. So you need to go back and change those little minute things like making sure that all the breadcrumbs are in exactly the same place, etc. So one more really cool thing that we can do to make our presentations even better is to use some component interactions. Let's have a look at an example. So we have these success matrix over here and it's just a space for the title and the icon. But what if I wanted a space where I could have a bit of description about each of these metrics? Let's see how we can do that. So what we're gonna make is we're gonna make like a flipping card. So when we hover over it, it's gonna flip to the back and show us the description. And doing this is a bit bitty, but we'll get that together. So to start off, I've got this front bit that says insert your matrix here, and I'm gonna call this title. It's really important to name things at this point. So next, I wanna create a version of this that has a description. So I'm just gonna copy it and I copy it underneath. So option and shift to drag it out. I'll, I'll just write something. So we've got our two cards. Now we're gonna do something a bit weird, but we're going to select them, copy them, shift and option. And then we're going to shift H. Now shift H flips them horizontally. Now this is the bit where we need to concentrate. Let's name these something different. So name them description. We're going to take the description that looks normal and place it on top of the flipped title. Take the description that is backwards and put it behind the normal title. So I'll just place it above and then use my left bracket to bring it behind. Title looking towards us, a layer behind it, you've got the description flipped. Then you've got the description looking normal and the title flipped behind it. Now select each one of these pairs, so title and description together and put them into a frame. I'm gonna put this one into a frame as well. Then we're going to select both of these frames and put them into a component set. Um, I'm gonna set the property to flipped and then this one is going to be false and this one is going to be true. So kind of the default state is this, where it's not flipped, it's just showing us the title, and then when we hover over it, it's going to whoop to show us the description. So now I need to just prototype them. Uh, I'll go into prototype, then select the title one, connect it to the other, and we're going to say, while hovering, change to flipped, and I'm gonna use smart animate. I'm just gonna use ease out for now. Let's see if this worked properly. So go back into design, I'm gonna copy this one and then I'll paste it into my slide. So I'll select the box that was here before, Command, Shift and R just to replace it. Moment of truth, are we ready? I'll make this a bit bigger. Are we ready? So if I just hover over it, you see how it kind of does that flip. Now, because we have that description kind of flipped and the title flipped, it does that action of doing that flipping motion. One more thing we need to do to make this completely foolproof. And this is a really, really important step. So please do not skip it. So if we change this title right now, you'll see what happens. I'll change to hello and I'll change this to what's up. What's going to happen is it's not going to look very good. Okay, because it has those things in the background that kind of like messing it up. So we need a way to control all of that text at once. So I'm just gonna command Z a few times to bring it kind of back to the original. What we're going to do is use our layers panel. We're going to select both of the titles. So the title that's on the not flipped one and on the flipped one. And in the design panel, next to where you choose the font, we're going to add a text component property. I'll call it title. I'll do the same for the description. So selecting them from the layer panel, flip one and not flipped one, add a component property and call it. Once I've done that, I'll go back to the instance over here. Now, when I select it, I can change the text from here. And when I change the text from here, I'm actually changing both of those text boxes. 
So now when I hover over it to flip it, you will see that it's remaining the same, right? So you can see that hello kind of flipping and flipping back and same with the, this is so cool. So you have to change both text boxes at the same time. You can't leave one of them with a the default and the other one changed. I'm just gonna copy this over and change all of them. Command shift and R to replace. And you can see how this slide has become super cool now because now we can talk about the metric, hover over it, talk about it some more and leave it to just show the title. And that is that. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you learned something new. Please leave your comments below, letting us know what your favorite tips are to make your presentations really pop. Share your tips and tricks with us. Also, let me know what other videos you'd like to see, if there's anything you're dying to know how to do in Figma and I'll make sure to make a video about it. Please like and subscribe. See you at the next one.